Hi, welcome to Spotlight On. My name is Angela Lee. I'm here today with Kimberly Bowe. She is a web developer for the League of Women Voters. Hi, Kimberly, how are you? Good, thank you. So from my understanding, the LWV website has actually recently been revamped. Could you actually talk about some recent developments? Yes, the League of Women Voters of Dallas decided it really wanted to streamline some of our administrative procedures so that we could put really focus our energy on voter registration, voter services, and, our, and the many issues that the League deals with. So one of the ways we did that was by going to a new web provider. So there are two parts of our website. There's an internal part that's used for members. And then we have the external part, which is what we've been really working for the public to have all the voter information that you need. And what kind of information could you access on the website? One of the great parts of the website is that in the very center, it has everything you need to know about voting. We give you an overview of the voting process from registering to vote, to confirming your voter registration, to where to call if you have trouble um, voting at the polls. So it sounds like you guys have a lot of general information just to help new voters too. Well, not just the new voters. I mean, obviously we wanna to gear toward helping new voters, but one part that has been part of the league's legacy for years is our voter's guide which now you may know better as vote411.org. That is actually a project that's um, it started at our national level. The league has three levels. We have the US level, we have a Texas level, and then we have the local Dallas level. And the national level puts together the vote411.org and it is nonpartisan question and answers from candidates to help voters make informed decisions on their ballots. And we do research here. We send out questions to all the different candidates and we gather their answers back and we share those. We also do pros and cons on issues. Once again, we are not telling you how to vote. We're simply providing you with non-biased information where every candidate is asked the same question so that you can make an informed decision. And that was called Vote411? Vote411.org. Vote 411, it's live now. It populates about 30 days before an election, and that is accessible on our website. Okay, great. And could you also discuss the documents tab? I noticed that was um, something you can find from the title page. Yes, yes. The documents tab, that is probably our area that is most under construction. We are trying to make more information there on a variety of issues for folks available. I will confess, since we just went live less than a month ago, there are only a few things in that area now. To make it easy for our public, we put there, the documents in there that apply to the public, like a voter's guide, there is a link on the voting page to those documents. So you don't have to necessarily go search through the documents to find the voter's guide or 411.org. And what kind of information do you hope will eventually be on the Documents tab? The Documents tab will contain, when we host meetings, our hope is, is that if a person can't attend a meeting, let's say to learn about um, the census and how the census impacts the drawing of district lines for voting, that we would be able to make any materials that would have been passed out at the, at the meeting or emailed out to members would be available there for the public so that they can access that same information. And I also noticed that people can actually have a member login. Could you talk about if people, can anyone be a member or how does that work? The membership, even though we are the League of Women Voters, we are a league open to all sex, gender. We have no discrimination on beliefs, Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, everyone is invited. And for students, we offer a $25 annual membership. You can, all you have to do is be over 16 and be interested in voting. Is this a free membership? No, unfortunately, no. Um, because we have the national level, this Texas level and the Dallas level, we have to raise money to help be able to, um, you know, 
printing out the voting cards, paying for the website. The league also gets involved with court cases to help fight for voters' rights. So they're, um, the regular dues for an individual is actually $75, but over 50 of that goes to the United, to the United States for the Texas League. But we do offer a $25 membership for students for one year. And we also have scholarship available if you request one. And can you access the scholarship information through the new updates in the website as well? Yes, if you are interested in, if you are a current member or interested in becoming a member, you would click on member login and then you would choose scholarship from the drop down. And then you would go through and the screens will walk you through. It acts as both a membership application and a scholarship application. So you just do it one time. Now, the scholarship applic the application, the membership application might look a little bit long, but that's because we want to find out what you're interested in doing so that we can match you up to one of our committees. And I also noticed at the top right of your website, you guys also linked up your different social medias. Could you talk about that? Yes, we understand website. It's great for when you're really researching something, but a lot of times you just need something quick, sent what's happening. So we are working to link whenever we post an update to the website, that it also would go out to Facebook, to Twitter, to Instagram. And when we post events, we now have an interactive calendar that people can register for events on our website and it will automatically send emails and we're trying to get more word out. Also, if you join as a member, you can put your own Facebook and Twitter handles in and then you can share our things out to your friends. Is there a specific tag that people can place so that um, there's more recognition for the league? Yes. Unfortunately, this is where it's a little interesting. Our website is lwvdallas.org. Our Facebook is LWV of Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, it is unfortunate, but it has to do with one legacy, two systems getting set up. So yes, they are unfortunately different. Um, is there any other features that we didn't get a chance to talk about that you would like to mention on the website? Yes, um, if, you, if a person is not registered to vote, if you will go to our voting tab, register to vote, we now have connected with an organization that will do an online registration now, it lets you start it online because Texas does not allow full online voter registration. But the company will mail you what you have entered on their system, let you sign it, and then mail it back in. So we can get you registered to vote. If you need absentee ballots, we have those available on the application to apply for an absentee ballot is also online. And once again, to check for uh, voter 411. And that can be accessed through the local, state, and the national website as well? Actually, just come straight to Dallas, and we have everything you need. Because with the way the voting works, the state has rules, but then each county makes its own rules. So by coming to Dallas, you will have what time the polls are open, what you need to bring with you. Um, and then when we do need to refer to a state rule, we will connect you to that higher level. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, my name is Angela Lee and this is Spotlight On.